Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist and I, today I wanted to talk to you about a very provocative uh, subject which is symptoms versus disease. Um, and it'll all make sense in a few seconds. Let me give you a real life example of someone I know. Um, and uh, this was a lady I know very well. Uh, she had, uh, uh, I've known her about two years, about a year and a half ago she started complaining of pain in her hip and uh, she went to her general practitioner and the general practitioner said oh well look you know you've got to take some painkillers so he gave her some painkillers and uh, she felt better so she kept taking the painkillers and then after a little while she started developing more pain so she went back to the uh, doctor and he gave her more painkillers um, and then after a little while you know, uh, those extra painkillers sorted her problem out, but then as time progressed, she started getting more pain. And then she started finding that um, she was beginning to feel unwell. And as time progressed, she started losing weight. And eventually, uh, she ended up in hospital and she was found to have <clears throat> an underlying disease, uh, which had actually caused destruction of the hip to the extent <clears throat> that it had fractured the hip and that is what had been causing her all this pain. Not only that, this disease had spread and it caused her all the weight loss and a lot of other symptoms. So the moral of this story is that if you don't, if you just treat the symptoms, in this lady's case the symptoms were pain, if you're just treating the symptoms, uh, you are not really getting to the core of the problem which is what is causing the symptoms you have to ask yourself someone's getting symptoms what is causing the symptoms and can i remove what the cause of the symptoms is because otherwise if you just mask the symptoms then more symptoms will appear from so you know a different type of symptom will appear if you have an underlying problem and you are obsessed with controlling symptoms uh, and you mask pain for example then something else will appear, fever, something like that, immobility, something like that. So what I'm trying to point out is that it is incredibly important to understand what are symptoms and what is a disease. And it is really important to try and target the disease so that if you treat the disease, you get rid of the symptoms automatically. If you just treat the symptoms, you don't get rid of the disease and more symptoms of a different nature may come up. So why is this important? It's important because I think modern day healthcare is obsessed with treating symptoms and not the disease. Let me explain this to you. In the Western world, there are only four things that dictate your health, okay? Uh, the first is your age. So the older you get, the less likely you are to be healthy. Um, number two, your genetics. If you have bad genetics, you have bad genetics and therefore you can inherit the predisposition to develop a certain disease. Number three, your luck. If you have bad luck, you know, you can just be very unlucky. And the fourth thing is lifestyle, okay? Now the first three, age, genetics and luck, you can't do very much about. Lifestyle, you can do something about. I believe that the majority of diseases that we see in the Western world are not diseases but actually symptoms so let's take the example of diabetes there is undoubtedly a small group of people who suffer from diabetes because it is a disease in those people i.e they have either been genetically they've uh, been predisposed to developing diabetes or they've just been very unlucky uh, but they've developed diabetes, okay? And those are the type 1 diabetics, the people who develop the diabetes and are diagnosed with the diabetes at a young age. And undoubtedly, in those people, it's important to treat the diabetes aggressively because the diabetes is the disease. However, the majority of people that we see with diabetics develop diabetes later on in life. They develop diabetes when they're older. Uh, they're generally 
people who are carrying more weight uh, they have associated conditions like high blood pressure and in those people i think that diabetes is not a disease but a symptom and the symptom is of an unhealthy body i.e these people so in in people uh, like that the diabetes results a as a result of age which you can't do anything about but more importantly as a result of a bad lifestyle and therefore i think we make a mistake because when someone comes to us and we find that they are diabetic we focus on treating the diabetes without targeting what is causing the diabetes which means that if someone is carrying a lot of extra weight if they're eating the wrong food if they're not sleeping adequately if they are not getting enough exercise if they're very stressed and then those are all the kind of things that will that cause an unhealthy body and when you have an unhealthy body you will develop symptoms and this is why it is not uncommon for people who are diabetic also to have high blood pressure these people will also have sleep apnea a lot of these people will also have atrial fibrillation a lot of these people will also go and have strokes and also go and have heart attacks and i think these are all symptoms of an unhealthy body so what tends to happen is person who is overweight who doesn't sleep who's you know always stressed who's very sedentary goes to the gp the gp says oh you're diabetic bang here are some tablets and you need to take these tablets and control your blood sugars what the gp has done is he's treated the symptoms what we really need to do is to turn around to this patient and say actually this is why you've developed your symptoms you need to work on your lifestyle you need to try and modify your diet you need to try and get more sleep you need to try and cut down the levels of stress that you're under you need to try and get more exercise and unless we do that what will tend to happen is that we will mask the symptoms of diabetes but then the patient will develop high blood pressure and if we mask the symptoms of high blood pressure then the patient will develop another symptom like atrial fibrillation and that is why it is in, that is why uh, a lot of patients who have these conditions have multiple uh, conditions like you know someone will have as a person gets older people who are overweight will develop diabetes but then along with that they'll also be diagnosed with high blood pressure along with that they'll also be diagnosed with atrial fibrillation treating the diabetes is not going to stop the atrial fibrillation from developing but treating the excessive weight allowing the person to be more uh, more active making sure that they're getting enough sleep making sure that they're leading a relatively stress-free lifestyle will stop the atrial fibrillation from developing it will stop the high blood pressure from developing and that is why i think it is highly important that when someone tells you you know this is what you have you have to ask yourself is this really a disease is this something that i've inherited or i'm just unlucky or is there anything in my lifestyle which could have contributed to this and unless you tackle that, <clears throat> unless you tackle that, um, things will not get better. Other conditions, hypertension, it's exactly the same thing. And there is undoubtedly a small group of people who have high blood pressure because they've been unlucky or they've inherited it. For the majority of people, it is a condition which is caused by age and bad lifestyle. Um, similarly with atrial fibrillation you may have seen my last video which was atrial fibrillation two snakes with one head again we're increasingly beginning to realize there is a group of people in whom atrial fibrillation is a disease these are people who have low natural fibrillation they've either inherited it or they've just been very unlucky for the majority of people the atrial fibrillation comes on later in life and is usually associated with things like diabetes and high blood pressure again in those people the atrial fibrillation is a symptom okay so when you get diagnosed with atrial fibrillation yes you need to treat that atrial fibrillation but the point is that unless you treat the rest of the person their lifestyle that atrial fibrillation will not get better and you will develop more symptoms be that heart attacks be that strokes um, and this is the problem with the modern day you know modern day medicine particularly in the western world it is 
designed to mask symptoms and not necessarily get people better. And perhaps the best way you can get yourself better is to work on your lifestyle because that is one of those things which doesn't require medications, it doesn't have any side effects, and you're actually guaranteed to feel better. So I hope this was useful. Um, and, and by the way, I just want to say that this is applicable in most diseases that we see. Irritable bowel syndrome, it's the same thing. Colitis is the same thing. So those are all kind of things which, you know, when the majority of Western world uh, conditions, I think there is a small proportion of people who are unfortunate or have the bad genetics and they are, you know, they, they have a disease and that disease needs to be treated. But for also there's a significant number of people in whom it's just a symptom of something else, something else being an unhealthy body caused by a bad lifestyle over a long period of time. So I hope this was useful. Uh, I'm very grateful for all your comments. I'm grateful for your likes. You know, it, it fills me with um, enthusiasm and encouragement, and I really appreciate it. And if you find this video useful, I'd be really grateful if you could share it with other people, uh, because it is <clears throat> important to my mind to get this message across, that people need to start taking responsibility for their health, because actually um, most doctors, most hospitals, most healthcare providers are actually not interested in your health. They're interested in your disease. And my aim is to say, well, don't develop a disease in the first place. Maintain your health. Because by the time you come to me, you'll end up being put on tablet after tablet after tablet, and I won't actually necessarily get you better. I'll just be masking your symptoms. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. My name is Sanjay Gupta. Here is me. Okay, I'm also on WhatsApp now, uh, but I don't know what my number is, so I'll need to find that out and put it on. My website is yourcardiology.co.uk. You can actually email me on um, yourcardiology at gmail.com. You can use the same email address to log into Facebook, and you can find me there. And uh, you know, I will always try and reply to your messages. Sometimes it takes longer, uh, but I'll always try. So thank you so much for listening and uh, have a great night. Take care.